Children's Church this morning. Turn with me in your Bibles to Psalms chapter number 8. Amen. Psalms chapter number 8. I just want to revisit and uh, speak a few things this morning that I believe will be an encouragement to us. Help us as we get ready for Thanksgiving. Amen. How many of you like Thanksgiving? Amen. Amen. I do. And I'm glad that it can be a part of our life every day. Not just that uh, Thursday in November that we celebrate. It's more than a turkey and a good meal. It's even more than family. Amen. It's a state of living. Amen. That we are thankful for all that God has done for us. Amen. Psalm chapter number 8. Uh, the Word of God says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is Thy name in all the earth, who has set Thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast Thou ordained strength because of Thy enemies, that Thou mightest still the, the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens and the work of Thy fingers and the moon and the stars which Thou hast ordained, what is man that Thou art mindful of him and the son of man that Thou visitest him? For Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of Thy hands Thou hast put all things under His feet. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is Thy name in all the earth. This is, if you look there, you'll find that it is a Psalm of David. Uh, <coughs> It is uh, one of several psalms that David writes, really uh, chapter number 3 through chapter number 41 of psalms. You'll find that there will be superscriptions written over them that will tell you that these are psalm of David. Uh, now there are two, uh, chapter 10 and chapter number 33 will not say that, but the rest there, uh, 3 through 41, will. And uh, we know several things about David. Man, I love him, and I've said this before, but you, you know, you see him as being the warrior. You see him as, as being this tough guy. You see him as, as being a father. You see him as being a husband. You see him as being this warrior. You see him as being a king. You see him as taking care of the sheep. Uh, but the side of him that you see is, man, this guy knows how to play the harp. Uh, he knows how to sing. He knows how to compose psalms. Uh, I mean, he is just... Th th this is one man that is like talented. He's a man's man, but yet he is in touch with, with being able to sing and, and, and have talents of putting it all together. And so here it is that David, he, he bears with us the deepest level of his soul as he shares songs about his love and his devotion to God. You know, a, a lot of men, you'll find that they don't let you into that level of knowing their soul, but, but David does. And, but he's tough about it, uh, but yet he's sensitive enough to bear the deepest level of his soul. Uh, the sweetest psalmist known in Israel, this accomplished songwriter. But what I love even greatest about him is David is a worshiper. Everything he goes through in his life, uh, he, he suffers the loss of a child. Uh, he knows being on the lowest rung of the ladder, taking care of the sheep. He knows what it's like to be tough enough to be able to slay a lion up there. But yet he knows what it's like to be a worshiper. Every area of our life, amen, should bring us to one uh, 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 high point, and that is that we are worshipers. Really, this month of November, amen, I want us as a church to recognize that we need to be worshipers because we have a lot to be thankful for. Hey, listen, I know we know loss. I know we know what it's like to be at the lowest rung of the ladder. I know that we know what it's like to be misinterpreted. I know that we know what it's like sometimes to have problems even in our own family, even in the kingdom that we live in. But the greatest thing David shows us that amongst all those things, 
is that God desires for us to worship Him. Awesome. Awesome. And so here it is. He's inclined to worship. He gives himself in worship to the Lord. And, and, and David, uh, uh, you'll find that in Psalms up to this, that David is crying unto God. But, but this time is different. David is worshiping the Lord in this psalm. Uh, and so, you ever look at the hymnal? Uh, Sister Holly did it this morning. I mean, we sung songs like He Abides to remind us of God's abiding with us. We sung songs like, Oh, how I love Jesus. We sung songs like, We're going to worship Him and we're going to praise Him. If you look at Psalms together, you'll find that there are hymns of praise, such as Psalms 145, and, and you'll find uh, hymns of creation, such as Psalms number 8. Uh, there are hymns of thanksgiving like Psalms 9 and Psalms 30. Uh, there are psalms that celebrate the law of God like when we read that long psalm of Psalm 119. You'll find that there are hymns that give us confidence like when we read Psalms 23. The confidence that it builds in us. And then there are uh, prophetic psalms where, where, where it's like the prophets. He's calling to be faithful like Psalms number 81. But right here in this psalm, David is giving us the psalm of worship. Now, I've told you this before. Maybe you forgot. Uh, but you'll find that, that, that right here it says, In the chief musician upon Giddeth. And so David is playing the Giddeth. Uh, it, it is a stringed instrument. And uh, there he is playing. I want you to imagine that David is not writing this as a poem or just as words, Terry. But he's writing it as a song. And the Bible says, Brother Eli, that he's playing the Giddeth as he plays it. Well, what does all this mean? Uh, uh, what, you want to know what it means? Uh, this is amazing, Gretchen, that this song, as he plays upon the Giddeth, it is a string instrument that comes from Gath. Now you guys are supposed to know what does that matter? Uh, you can buy a guitar that's made in Harrisburg. You can buy a guitar that's made uh, in, in Japan. You can buy one that's made wherever. What does it mean? Well, it really means a whole lot, actually. Because this instrument is from Gath. Does anyone know anything about David and Gath? Do you remember a big old giant that David slew? His name was what? Goliath. Where was Goliath from? Gath. So here he takes and he says, My enemy was from Gath. But I have slain my enemy. I have conquered him. And because I have conquered him, uh, this instrument was, was really driven from Gath. But you know what? God became my victory. And in my victory, God gave me a song to sing. And once what, what was a big giant in front of me, God helped me conquer it. And now part of my victory is to take this instrument and sing worship and praise to God. Hey, listen, every one of you in here have had a giant in your life. Whether it's something you face financially, something in your family, uh, something spiritually where the enemy has come against you, whether it's something health-wise, uh, you face that giant and it seemed very, very big. And you thought, God, how am I ever, ever going to conquer this giant? But through the grace of God, you conquered it. And now today, you have an instrument that used to belong to your enemy, and now you're playing on it, and you're giving worship to God because God has given you the victory over a great big giant in your life. Listen, I know that there are things that come in our life and they look like giants. You may, you may say, listen, I, I see what my incoming finances are and I see what my outgoing finances are and they seem completely bizarre how I'll ever be able to make ends meet. And so we give it to God, we're faithful to God, and all of a sudden God begins to do His adding and His multiplying and He takes care of the child of God. Amen. God conquered your giant. Some of you may be here and maybe you faced sickness before and you thought, I'll never be able to conquer this. It's chronic. It's, it's large. It affects me day in and day out. Uh, and, but, but God touched you and by His stripes we are healed. We went to Him pressing through with faith. We touched the hem of His garment and God healed you. Now take the, uh, the, the instrument and begin to worship and praise God. 
Some of you probably thought that in your family situations would never be solved. God, how can you fix this? The, 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 the contention, the, the situation. But God fixed it. Some of you in here were bound by things that you thought, I'm going to die and go to hell. Because this has my life bound. But God came by one day by the precious Holy Ghost and He began to tug and begin to pour you. And what had you bound, amen, now lays in chains at your feet and you are free. Amen. God gave you an instrument from the enemy's camp. Begin to pick it up and play it and give praise to God. Listen, I haven't covered every situation. I just gave you some very vague situations. But every one of you in here, amen, as taxing as it may be, amen, the fight, amen, the instrument sometimes is so helpful in helping us write the words, amen, and giving us a melody that we can sing songs. God did did not take that victory for it to be wasted in your life. But God gave you the victory so that you could reflect upon it. So you could sing and so you can worship. So pick up your instrument and worship God because He's worthy. Every one of you here, you've been a David. Amen. I believe this, that God took an instrument from the enemy's camp and He put it in your hands that you can worship and praise God. And so in Psalms 8, there's a drawing us to worshiping God, the glory of His creation, the greatness of His creation, the solar system. Uh, David, he begins to draw us to the place where, where he says, O oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set the glories above the heavens. And how the mouths of babes and sucklings hath ordained strength because of my enemies. You see, the enemy would want to rob you. He would want to lie to you and tell you, all kinds of things. Amen. And we'll get there a little bit later. Uh, but, but, but the Bible says, Amen, uh, that thou uh, mightest still the enemy, the avenger. When I consider the heavens and the work of thy finger and the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Amen. When you begin to look around about you, who but God? Who but God? I'm amazed when we look at the solar system. You know, our girls, uh huh. You know, Sister Jean, I go outside. I don't sometimes even hardly take time to look at the stars and the moon. You know, we're darting in and out, Sister Jenny. You know, life is just, you know, it's busy like everybody else. But, but those little girls, they, 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 they look at the moon. They ask the stars. Do you ever look? Amen. On what God has created. Amen. And who He is and how great He is. You see, David, despite the enemy's attempt to destroy creation and wreck everything that God has created. You see, he uses words like foe and enemy and, and avenger, you know, to give us that hint that, that God has created a place for us to live and, and worship Him in. But the enemy wants to destroy it. And so David, he said, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Amen. Let, let me be reminded that, that you've created all this. But God, you put me over all the animals. And, and, and so when the enemy would want to put thoughts in my mind to, to, to make me question, what is my purpose? Does God love me? Uh, does he desire to save me? Uh, uh, what, what does his word have for me? Does he care about me? David says, wait a second, just begin to look around about you at the greatness of God. Yes, He has a purpose for you. And yes, He loves you. And yes, He wants to save you. He wants to work and move in your life. Uh, David said, how excellent is your name, Lord, your name, oh Lord, in all the earth of all the beautiful things. Yet God, your name is the most excellent thing. Think about the name of God, how wonderful it is. That name that can save. David said, I'm, I'm, I'm here on my instrument and I'm beginning to reflect back on my life. This is, this is the string instrument that I took from my enemy. He said, I remember when Goliath was in front of me. Did David say that, Goliath, you come against me with a spear sword, but I went down by the board and I got five stones. I come against you with five stones. No, he doesn't. He said, Goliath, you come against me with the spirit of sword, but I come against you in the name of my Lord. 
Amen. And now David begins to reflect back as he's singing on this instrument. And he said, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how excellent is your name. Amen. Your name's above sickness. Your name is above discouragement. Your name is above all the hatred in the world. Your name is above anything that I can be going through. So, Lord, I'm not focusing on anything else. I'm not focusing on my power. I'm not even focusing on the situation. But I'm focusing on your name that is greater than anything. And it's not about my swing. It's not about my stone. Amen. It's about the name of the Lord that is great. That name that has a power to save. Amen. That name that has power to deliver. That name that has power to save. That name that's associated with life and life more abundantly. I, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Amen. There's good outcomes. Amen. Hey, your name, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> There's good outcomes Amen. when your name is spoke. Amen. Think about the name of the Lord. Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Amen. Jehovah, our banner. Jehovah, our healer. Jehovah, our peace. Jehovah, our victory. Think about the names of Christ. So many names. Amen. He's the Savior. He's the Redeemer. He's the branch. He's the first fruits. Amen. Uh, Jesus is the image of God the Father. He's the pearl of great price. Amen. He is our refiner. He is our Savior. He is our deliverer. He is our purifier. Amen. I want you to know that when you think about the name of God, amen, it is great this morning. I don't know what your need is here this morning, but if you'll forget about all your situations in life, amen, whether it's uh, you're in your family, in your health, or in your finances or in your job or in your community, whatever it is. Don't look at that. But this morning began to think about God's name. How excellent is your name and all the earth. If you're not saved, when you think about being your Savior, amen, it's great. Because you are saved, you think about being your Savior. Amen. Grab a hold of this name this morning. How excellent is your name. I love that chorus we sing, Jesus. Jesus. There's just something about that name. He's Master, Savior, Jesus. He's like a fragrance after the rain. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away. But there's something. There's something. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. He goes on down to say this, David said, Ah, oh, the mouths of babes, even those who are infants in the faith. Amen. His name creates power over the most uh, a crafty enemy of our soul. Amen. The name of Jesus. Uh, and he has a way of silencing their tongue. David said that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. I love the way that God's able to put the enemy to silence this morning. Amen. At the name of Jesus, the enemy has to be silenced. Uh, do you know that there were uh, 185,000 that were with Sennacherib, but God took two angels to to take care of that multitude of people. God has a way of silencing the enemy. You may say, Brother Seville, uh, but grief is ringing out in my ears and pain is ringing out in my body. Uh, I, I'm just so, uh, I have so much upheaval. I want you to know that at the name of Jesus, He can silence the enemy of our soul. Amen. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is Thy name in all the earth. comes. We just need to speak the name of Jesus. Jehovah. God Almighty. When I consider the heavens, the work of that finger, and the moons and the stars which thou hast obtained, what is my, my man that thou art mindful of him? Thinking about how great creation is. But the Bible says in Genesis that God created man and God created woman. And he gave them a position a little lower than the angels, but over everything of the earth. Do you know what? God has given us authority this morning. Amen. God has given us authority, not within ourselves, but through Him. I want you to think about this, the greatness of God. Sometimes it may feel like God is a million miles off. But God's as close as the mention of His name. 
For the world, he talks about this universe that we're in, that he's created the heavens and the earth. I want you to think about this. Now, I know we changed our clock, and I'm not even sure what kind of sun rose this morning because I'll, I'll just be frank with you. The light broke in on my bed, and that's when I woke up. So, you know, we had an hour, so we tried to do lots of things last night to gain that hour. I probably should have gained it in the morning, but you know how it is. But do you know, and I'm just using this as an example, let's say the sun began to peek at the earth at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. Now we know that light travels so fast at 186,000 miles per second. That's crazy. 186,000 miles per second. Now, I want you to think about this. That's a lot of miles. And that's pretty quick in a second. But yet if the sun rose and began to shine at 6 o'clock before it got to this old earth, it was 6.08. Even though the light was traveling at 186,000 miles per second. Whoa. That is crazy to think about this universe. I ain't talking about lichens. I'm not talking about Pennsylvania. I'm not even talking about the United States of America. I'm not even talking about the earth. I'm talking about the universe. And I'm talking about a sun that sits so far away that it took eight minutes for the light of that sun to get to us this morning, even though it was traveling at 186,000 miles per second, it still took eight minutes to get here. God created this big old thing. Amen. The Word of God says that God reigns supremely in the heavens and this earth is His footstool. Amen. That's how big my God is in the scheme of the universe that we know of. Is that crazy awesome or what? Amen. But what are what is man that thou art mindful of? Brother Eli, even though this universe is so vastly huge, it can't, we can't even wrap our minds around it. We've never been there. We've never seen all of it. Amen. But yet, Sister Tina, He he gave us authority in this earth, amen, and He created us in such a way that He said, I want to get involved with every detail of your life. That's how big God is, but that's how great God's love is towards you in this big old universe. He loves you enough, amen, that He thinks of you and He's concerned about you. I want you to know this morning, that should bring gratitude to your heart. Amen. 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 That should bring gratitude to your heart. Amen, that God loves us enough. Amen, that this earth, Isaiah 66, one says, is His footstool. Amen, but He says to us, He said, I want you to think about that. The earth is my footstool, but I'm big enough to handle anything that you'll go through today or tomorrow or the rest of your life. Amen, that's a big God. What is a man that thou art mindful of Him? Amen. God wasn't just creating this world just to show His glory alone, but then He crowned man with putting Him in the middle of it and giving us amen, the ability and the connection with Him and the power over His creation. We have a lot to be thankful for. A lot to be thankful for. Amen. That in this big old world, for we bend our hands and bend our hearts that the God of this universe hears every cry that we pray. Ah, but the God of this universe loves every creation <coughs> that we can get to. I mean, Terry, the stars are innumerable. The moon, it's crazy. Amen. The way it works and it controls the tides. And the sun that even though it takes eight minutes, it sustains life upon earth. God has all of that to show his glory. But what he really wants more than the glory of creation is our voice of worship. What is man that thou art mine? And that we can call upon Him. Amen. 
and as we call upon him that he works and moves in our life. When we call, the word of God says, Jeremiah 29, 19 says, but if we call the Lord, the Lord will answer us. The Bible says in, in, in 2 Timothy 1, 7, that he's not given, that he's given us power over the spirit of fear. You know what? We don't have anything to be anxious or fearful of. Amen. The Bible says, O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glories above the heavens. And out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has he ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. I don't care where you are in the faith, even if you're a baby this morning, God has promised that if you'll call, that in faith, he'll still the enemy of your soul. He'll silence. I know that one day every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. He's going to silence the enemy once and for all. Don't get Hollywood, amen, the filth that they put out, amen, affects this old world. Don't let Hollywood affect you. Let God affect you. Let God affect you, knowing that if we will put faith in Him, that He will silence the enemy. Sister Holly, if you'll come to the piano this morning. I don't know if any of you have gotten some age on you that's like me, that these days I need these glasses to bring things into focus, the things that I look at and the things that I read. If I've tried to do anything this morning, I've tried to be intentional on this first Sunday of November to bring us some focus and clarity of the greatness of the God that we serve. The things that He has done in our past. The instruments that He's given us that we can worship and praise Him because He's given us victory. But David said, I want you to stop. And I want you to realize that I want you to take the instrument of your enemy. And I want you to sing a song of worship and praise no matter where you're at today. Because no matter what you're facing, there's an enemy in this world that will want to rob your song and steal your joy and take your focus off the greatness of God. But I want you to look around at the greatness of creation and all that God has done. And as you look at the greatness of God, your heart cannot help but to rejoice. And then would you stand with me all around the sanctuary this morning? You know, it seems like this week we as a church we face some big things. Maybe not everybody, but in general as a pastor I realize that there's so much going on in everybody's life and it's busy. Those things can be distracting. They can distract us from who God is, what God can do. And so this morning, I simply want us to take our attention and put back on God and how He is. That no matter what your enemy is this morning, that God wants to silence that enemy as you worship Him. So would you close your eyes this morning? Would you take the past victories of your life? Would you begin to sing a song to God on them and worship Him? Say, oh.